Item Blade. Beast Quest. Book number one. Bruno the Fire Dragon. Prologue. Kalador the Brave stood at the foot of the mountain. His bronze armor gleamed in the pale morning sunlight. The fire dragon is close. You can feel it the night. Pointing his sword up towards the mist at the top of the mountain. For the sake of our kingdom, must be stopped. Good luck, sir, said Edward, his young page. Calder held out an arm and hand and placed it on Edward's shoulder. They both understood that they might never see each other again. Night turned to climb the smooth, dark slope. His feet slipped and skidded on the rock, but he dragged himself up with determination, slowly climbing higher and higher. Soon the mist closed behind him and was lost from sight. All that was left was an eerie sense. Edward shivered. <clears throat> Suddenly, the mountain started to shake. Edward could feel the vibration tremble, traveling through his feet and up his legs. He stumbled and his chin hit the ground with a huge jutter. The ruin to the ground. There was a metallic taste in his mouth. Blood. What was happening? Calador! Edward yells, scrambling to his feet as the rocks shift to be. Meets him. Come back! But... His voice was lost in the grounding sounds that filled the air. The whole mountain shook violently. Was it about to come crashing down on him? Edward was seized with panic. Heart pounding, he looked up and started, saw two overhanging rocks start to move. Their sharp edges caught the light as they edged out. Suddenly, they slashed through the air like giant axe heads. Edward flinched. As the mist cleared, he glimpsed that Calador was cl clinging to the side of the mountain. Then something reared up beyond the night, and Edward saw the flash of an eye, the thick scales of a leathery skin. It was the spiked head of a huge dragon. Suddenly, everything had horrible sense. His master had been right. The beast was close. It wasn't a mountain. It was the dragon itself. Glancing down with a rush of fear, Edward really realized that he was standing on the dragon's tail and that Calador was holding on to the monster's back. And those two overhanging rocks were the dragon's mighty wings. He wanted to run, but his legs were frozen with fear. Now we could see the sides of the dragon moving in and out as he breathed heavily. Steam hissed out of the creature's nostrils. Calador, come back! Edward yelled again, but a terrifying roar drowned out his words. The dragon's wings unfolded again, stretching out to beat the air in that deadly rhythm. It's taking off! Edward shouted. Calador, quick! Get back! Calador's words carried finally in the on the air, go to the city, run, King Hugo, run! Before Edward could move, the drone flinched his tail, sending him flying. Hit the ground at hard, shaking and gasping for breath. As the time, terrifying beast rose into the air, Calador's screams filled his head. Edward scrambled to his feet and tried to run after his master, but the dragon was already high above him. He let out a huge roar and a jet of orange flame lit up the sky. As it disappeared into the distance, Ricardo's antlets, scorched and smoking, clattered to the ground beside Edward, clutched in its fingers with a golden key. The echoes of Calder's cries hung in the air, and silence. The night was gone. This mission to free the fire dragon, the Marvel's travel, terrible curse, had failed. Chapter 1 The Mysterious Fire Tom stared hard at his enemy. Surrender, villain, he cried, or taste my blade. Give the sack of a hay, blow with the poker. That's what you take care of, he announced. One day I'll be the finest swordsman in all Aventia. Be better than my father, Taladin the Swift. Tom felt the ache in his heart. 
that always came when he thought about his father. The uncle and the aunt who had brought Tom up since he was a baby never spoke about him or why he had left Tom to care about Tom's mother and died. He shoved the poker bag into his back. One day I'll know the truth, he so swore. As Tom walked back to the village, a sharp smell caught at the back of his throat. Smoke, he thought. He stopped and looked around. Through the trees to the left, he could hear a faint crackling as a wave of warm air hit him. Fire! Tom pushed away through the trees and burst into a field. The golden wheat had been burned to black stubble and a veil of smoke hung in the air. Tom stared in horror. How could this happen? Happened. He looked up and blinked. For a second, he thought he saw a dark shape moving towards the hills in the distance. But then the sky was empty once again. An angry voice called out, Who's there? Although the smoke, Tom saw a figure stamping round the cage of the fields. Did you come through the woods? The man demanded. Did you see who did this? Tom shook his head. I didn't see a soul. There's evil at work here, said the farmer, his eyes flashing. When told your uncle what happens, our village of Irinel is cursed. It may be all of us with it. Tom turned and ran as fast as he could, stumbling over the blackened trees. Tom burst into the village. Square, gasping for breath, was full of villagers. What were they all doing here? It was in market day. They were shouting and waving their hands at his uncle, who was standing on a bench at the edge of the square. Fire in the fields! What's next? One man shouted. The troubles got worse each day, cried another villager. The beasts have turned evil. Tom knew that Abantia was said to be protected by six beasts, including a fire dragon, but no one was sure they really existed. Have you seen the river? The woman asked. It's so long, we'll soon run out of drinking water. We're cursed, old man wailed. I don't believe in curses, said Tom's uncle firmly. But our village needs help. One of us must go to the king and request his aid. Tom stepped forward. I'll go to the palace, uncle. The villagers laughed. Send a boy on such a mission? Ah, the king will laugh at us for sending us a child. Tom's uncle spoke quietly. No, Tom, you're too young. I'm head of the village. I'll go. Suddenly a small boy smeared and shoot. Pushed through the crowd. Help, guess. Please help. Our burn is on fire. Men, bring your pails to the river now. Tom's uncle roared to the crowd. The rest of you bring the spades to the barn. If you can't fetch the fire, we'll bury it. Quickly. Tom looked at his uncle as the men rushed to obey. The village needs you here as its leader, Uncle Henry. He said, please let me go instead. Tom's uncle turned to face him. He said, serious. I suppose I have to let you out into the world sooner or later, he said. He stayed in the distance. Perhaps it's meant to be. He shook himself and turned back to Tom. Yes, you must go to the king. And there's no time to waste. You will have to leave first thing tomorrow.